Imagine Earth millions of years ago, a harsh tapestry of sun-scorched savannas and shadowed dense forests. This was a wild world where every sunrise brought a new struggle for existence. Life was a relentless competition, and for early hominins, survival was the only rule. Extinction, as history shows, was a normal part of evolution. Our story in this context is an extreme yet clear illustration of this brutal struggle. Our narrative begins in the cradle of East and South Africa, between 2.5 and 4 million years ago, where our earliest hominin ancestors branched off from other primates. Around 2.3 million years ago, Homo habilis began crafting and using simple stone tools, marking a pivotal turning point. A million years later, Homo erectus migrated out of Africa, carrying the mastery of fire and sophisticated Aculean hand axes across the vast Eurasian continent. This global dispersion set the stage for future encounters. When Homo sapiens later began their out-of-Africa migrations, these vast lands were far from empty. Instead, they were already inhabited by well-adapted, established hominin populations like Neanderthals and Denisovans. In a world where resources are finite and often scarce, the presence of multiple hominin species with broadly overlapping ecological niches made competition not just possible but inevitable. The competitive exclusion principle dictates that it is incredibly difficult for two species to coexist indefinitely in the exact same ecological niche in the same place. If one species is a better competitor, it will tend to outcompete and displace the other. This principle offers a stark scientific lens through which to view the coming conflicts, implying that even without direct skirmishes, the superior competitor would naturally out-resource and replace the other. So among all these kin who was the most resilient, let's uncover the truth. While Homo sapiens was evolving, several other hominin species thrived in their own ecological niches, each a testament to resilience and adaptation. Stocky robust with long low skulls, heavy brow ridges and a distinctive occipital bun, Neanderthals were the hardy inhabitants of Europe. Their wide chests and short limbs were adaptations to the frigid climates of the European Ice Ages, making them efficient sprinters in forest and steppe environments. They were formidable hunters, primarily targeting large to medium-sized herbivores, such as red deer, reindeer, woolly mammoths, and rhinoceroses. Their diet was far more diverse than once thought, especially in Mediterranean regions, where they exploited smaller animals, marine shellfish, and a surprisingly wide array of plants, fungi, and pine nuts. Their Mousterian stone tools were sophisticated for their time. However, Neanderthal populations remained small and dispersed susceptible to the effects of inbreeding with effective breeding populations, estimated at only 3,000 to 12,000 individuals across their vast range. They lived in smaller groups with less contact and gene flow between them compared to Homo sapiens. Known primarily through genetic mapping, Denisovans were a sister group to Neanderthals, spread across a vast and varied landscape in Asia, from the frigid mountains of Tibet to the tropical forests of Southeast Asia. Their physical characteristics, pieced together from fragmentary fossils, include large molars with unusual cusp patterns and robust mandibles with prominent teeth. The Dragon Man Harbin skull, a potential Denisovan cranium, suggests a brain size comparable to Homo sapiens, yet it retains a heavy projecting brow ridge and square eye sockets, hinting at a unique blend of archaic and advanced features. Their ecological adaptability was remarkable, with evidence of adaptation to the extreme cold and high altitudes of the Tibetan Plateau, as well as to the warm, humid conditions of subtropical Taiwan and the rainforests of Southeast Asia. They crafted sophisticated stone tools on par with Neanderthals, including 300,000-year-old wooden digging sticks and possible hook-like implements found in China, suggesting a significant reliance on plant foraging. Denisovans interbred with both Neanderthals evidenced by the Denny hybrid fossil and Homo sapiens leaving their genetic mark on modern populations, particularly in Melanesia and Aboriginal Australians. 
Discovered in Liang Bua Cave on the island of Flores, Indonesia, these hobbits stood less than four feet tall, three and a half to three feet seven inches, and weighed approximately 55 pounds, possessing remarkably small brains, about 23 cubic inches. This extreme insular dwarfism was a profound evolutionary response to the limited resources of their isolated tropical island environment. Despite their diminutive size and modest brains, Homo floresiensis exhibited surprising behavioral complexity. They crafted simple stone tools used to hunt pygmy stegodon elephants and giant rats on the island. Evidence suggests they engaged in sophisticated cooperative hunting techniques and controlled fire for cooking. The case of Homo floresiensis directly challenges the assumption that larger brain size directly equates to higher intelligence and complex behavior. The most recent evidence for Homo floresiensis dates to about 50,000 years ago, a date that eerily coincides with the arrival of modern humans in the region, strongly implying that Homo sapiens played a role in their disappearance. Across the diverse landscapes inhabited by all hominin species, the ominous shadow of large, formidable predators constantly loomed. All hominins shared a fundamental vulnerability to dangerous predators, irrespective of their diverse adaptations or geographical separation. This shared threat underscores the inherent harshness of their ancient world. Europe Neanderthals. They faced colossal cave bears ferocious wolves, stealthy cave lions, and opportunistic cave hyenas. Asia Denisovans, in the Altai Mountains, primary threats included dominant cave hyenas and cunning wolves. Flores Homo floresiensis, the hobbits contended with formidable Komodo dragons and ancient crocodiles. So what enabled our ancestors, amidst myriad threats, to not only survive but to rise to dominance? The hominin journey of survival was built upon a foundation of shared evolutionary innovations. Bipedalism, the ability to walk upright on two legs, was a defining trait that freed the hands for carrying and tool use, a characteristic common to all hominin species. Tool use evolved gradually from the simple Oldowan choppers of Homo habilis to the more sophisticated and versatile Akulayan hand axes crafted by Homo erectus. Crucially, Homo erectus pioneered the mastery of fire, a transformative technology around one million years ago. Fire provided warmth, warded off predators, and allowed for cooked food, reducing the physical demands on teeth, potentially influencing the evolution of smaller teeth in later hominins, including Homo sapiens. Despite sharing these fundamental adaptations, each hominin lineage developed distinct strategies tailored to their specific environments, demonstrating remarkable ingenuity. This specialization, while advantageous in stable conditions, may have limited their adaptive flexibility when environments underwent rapid, unpredictable changes or when confronted by a highly adaptable and versatile competitor like Homo sapiens. The true crucible for Homo sapiens' dominance lay in their evolving brains and unparalleled social capacity. Possessing a significantly larger brain, Especially an expanded prefrontal cortex, PFC Homo sapiens developed advanced cognitive skills that far surpassed their hominin relatives. This PFC was the seat of abstract thought reasoning, expanded working memory and executive functions, precisely the tools for complex planning and problem solving. More importantly, the gradual development of complex language emerging around 50,000 years ago had a profound reciprocal impact on these cognitive functions, creating a powerful feedback loop that accelerated mental development. This allowed for symbolic thinking and coordination on an unprecedented scale. This continuous self-accelerating development enabled Homo sapiens to process information, innovate, and adapt at a pace other hominins simply could not match. Beyond individual intellect, Homo sapiens' unparalleled capacity for cooperation in large numbers proved to be a decisive factor. This ability, as theorized by Harari, stemmed from our unique capacity to imagine and conceptualize abstract shared beliefs, which enabled complex social organization and coordination. 
This stands in stark contrast to Neanderthals who appear to have lived in smaller, more isolated groups with less intergroup contact hindering the exchange of knowledge and genetic resilience. This social flexibility was Homo sapiens' superpower, allowing for the rapid dissemination of discoveries and innovations across a broader population. This enhanced cognitive and social capacity fueled an unprecedented pace of technological and cultural innovation in Homo sapiens. While other hominins like Neanderthals developed sophisticated tools, their rate of innovation was vastly slower. Homo sapiens, however, rapidly developed superior tools like spear throwers and bows and demonstrated continuous rapid technological evolution as they spread across Eurasia. This cumulative culture where knowledge and inventions built upon each other was a self-reinforcing engine for dominance. Larger, more stable Homo sapiens populations facilitated greater social cooperation. These technological and cultural advancements then allowed Homo sapiens to support higher population densities and exploit a wider variety of resources more efficiently. This self-reinforcing cycle created an insurmountable competitive advantage forming the core mechanism behind the dark truth of our species' unique singular rise to dominance. Today we are the only human species left on Earth. The echoes of our kin have faded into fossils, DNA, and myth. Yet they did not entirely vanish. An astonishing truth is that Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA persists within our immune systems, our metabolism, and even our skin pigmentation. These genetic traces are silent witnesses to intimate contact, cooperation, conflict, and perhaps even love. An increasingly accepted theory is that Homo sapiens played a direct role in the extinction of other hominin species. Archaeological and genetic evidence strongly suggests in Europe, Neanderthals disappeared within a few thousand years of Homo sapiens' arrival. In Asia, Denisovans were also gradually assimilated or went extinct. On islands like Flores, the extinction of Homo floresiensis occurred shortly after the appearance of Homo sapiens. While direct evidence of systematic violence is rare, there are indications of intense competition. Neanderthal bones show signs of trauma consistent with Homo sapiens' weaponry. Factors such as Homo sapiens' cognitive advantage, superior tools and hunting strategies, higher population densities, and ecological displacement undeniably tipped the scales. This does not necessarily imply systematic genocide, but it points to a pattern of competitive exclusion. Our ancestors, with their adaptable minds and interconnected social networks, simply outcompeted and outreproduced their cousins. They pushed other hominins into marginal territories, outhunted them for vital resources, and may have even inadvertently introduced diseases to populations with no immunity. If we indeed eliminated our closest kin, what does that say about our nature? Was it an act of nature, the advantage of one species over another? or the first sign of a pattern that would later lead to colonization, enslavement, and environmental devastation. We are a species with a paradoxical heart capable of cooperation and cruelty, preserving nature and exploiting it, remembering and forgetting. The question of whether Homo sapiens killed off Homo neanderthalensis or Homo floresiensis is not just a question of anthropology, it is a mirror reflecting our current behavior. The dominance of Homo sapiens is not just a story of the survival of the fittest, but also a story of irreversible loss. We are the sole remaining human species, a solitude unprecedented in hominin evolutionary history. As we face new existential threats, climate change, artificial intelligence, and ecological collapse, remembering our evolutionary past can guide a wiser, more compassionate future. Whether these extinctions were the result of direct conflict, indirect competition, or a combination of factors, we cannot deny that the emergence of Homo sapiens coincided with the disappearance of other hominin species. We stand at the precipice of a new era facing global challenges unprecedented in scope. The question is not merely how we survive, but at what cost. Our legacy is a powerful reminder of the strength of adaptation, innovation, and cooperation, but also a cautionary tale about the consequences of unchecked dominance. 
Imagine a future where we, with our extraordinary intellect and capacity for cooperation, no longer extinguish our fellow beings, be they biological kin or kin, within the broader ecosystem. Let us together explore the lessons from our deep past to build a future where life is celebrated, where diversity is preserved, and where humanity truly lives up to its highest potential, not just as survivors, but as stewards.